Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, Episode 8. Today we're going to talk about how to profile our Go programs. Uh, you can check out that link for a ton more details on what we'll be able to cover today. So before we get started, uh, let me just mention that I'm going to be traveling uh, at the end of this week into next week. Uh, to spend some time with my family for the Thanksgiving holiday. So there's going to be no screencast or newsletter next weekend. But I will be back the following weekend. So let's get started immediately here. First of all, let's talk about why we're here to talk about profiling. So profiling is very important for any software engineer because it allows us to take a program, even a running program, and determine what it's doing with underlying system resources like CPU, memory, network I.O., file I.O., and so on and so forth. So specifically with Go, there are two ways to profile. The one that we'll cover today is running an HTTP server that outputs various pieces of profiling data. The other way, which the HTTP server is built on top of, is to do manual profiling. And that is using the runtime pprof package, as you see here in this link, uh, and analyzing, excuse me, and analyzing the data with this Go tool pprof tool. So let's get started with our example now. So here I've written some code, which does some a, a few notable things. The first here on line seven is it imports net HTTP pprof but we're only importing that to take advantage of the package running its init function. And the init function simply registers some profiling HTTP routes on the default HTTP serve mux. So down here, we're serving our profiling server on line, uh, excuse me, on port 8080. And by passing in nil, we're telling HTTP.listen and serve to serve that default serve mux that the profiling routes are registered on. We're also calling this recur func on line 19, which is down here, and it intentionally just runs away with Go routines and also runs away with memory. So as you can see here, uh, it's appending more and more memory onto each slice. It's calling itself on line 32 in a Go routine. And then on line 33, it's calling itself recursively. So in line 32's case, it's adding yet another Go routine onto the heap. And on line 33, uh, it's adding another call onto the stack. And for anyone wondering, uh, Go currently does not support tail recursion, uh, so this call will actually add another stack frame without uh, causing the, the Go runtime to eliminate the current stack frame. So let's start this program up. It looks like we already had it running. Let's wait for it to die. Okay, now let's start it up. And there it is. And now let's go view our profiling data in our browser. So here we go. Uh, it's a pretty sparse page, but you can see here there are four profiles that we can look at. The ones we're going to focus on today are heap and go routine. So first of all, heap. Now you can see uh, these are essentially snapshots of the heap, uh, but they're not very helpful off the bat. You can run that go tool pprof to get a lot more data out of them. But what we're going to look at today with our naked eye are the global memory statistics for our heap profile. Let's focus on number of allocations. You can see that one will constantly be going up. So right now it looks at a looks uh, just about shy of 430,000 allocations. If we refresh the page, we can see now it's just shy of 470,000. Refresh again. Now it's above uh, 500,000 and it will just continuously go up. Same thing with number of malloc's. Continuously go up and up and up. And that's the underlying system requesting memory from the operating system. Allocations is pretty similar to malloc's. It's what the Go runtime will do just after it gets memory back from the malloc. And you can keep going down the list. And you'll see no some numbers continuously go up and some continuously go down. Now let's go and see why. So we can go into our full Go routine stack dump, and you can see a stack for every single Go routine that's currently running. This is similar to the stack frames that you would get back from having the uh, program panic. So you can see where every single Go routine is. 
Uh, this is one of the go routines that's currently sleeping, and it looks like it's three stack frames deep in the uh, recur funk. Here's another very similar one. Here's one that's only one stack frame deep, and so on and so forth. So this gives you a global view of what your system's doing. So this is most likely the most important starting point for you to go in and start profiling your program. So since we're just about out of time here, I'll leave you with that. Um, but I hope that you can take some of, this, uh, some of this tooling and some of this knowledge on how to use it and apply it to your program to see if you can save some memory or improve some other part of your program's performance. So that's all for today. Uh, I want to remind everyone that I will be out next week on the Thanksgiving holiday, so I will be back in two weeks with a new screencast, uh, and I hope to see you all then. Take care.